Every now and then I have made fun of cryptocurrencies in the sense that it's money that's just made up essentially. It has there's nothing that is backing it, it has no attachment to any physical resource. It's literally just ones and zeros. And then I remembered that most of the major currencies in the world are exactly the same. They just work a little bit differently. So I have some basic definitions here. I'm not going to go into any of the technical information or lingo on any of these currencies. If you want to investigate more, please do so. This is going to be more in terms of what does this say about who we are rather than the technical workings of different types of currencies. So now most of the major currencies in the world are fiat currency, which is a legal tender, which value is backed by government um, that issued it. So examples of fiat currencies are the US dollar and the euro. The, those currencies exist simply because the government makes them and enforces their value, essentially. Um, and that is not to be confused with money, uh, which is their va the value of money is backed by physical goods like gold and silver and whatnot. Then cryptocurrency is digital currency using encryption techniques uh, to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify the transfer of funds independently of a central bank. So, essentially, the difference between fiat currency and cryptocurrency, yes, there are technical differences, but in terms of the practicality of it, in terms of in layman's terms, for the average person, neither of those types of currencies actually have any physical goods, any tangible assets backing them. They are, for lack of a better term, essentially made up and exist and have value only because we give them value and we continue to believe and participate in the system in a way that maintains that value. So, what does this say about us? Well, one aspect that I would like to question is if money is such an intangible thing, it's something that is just numbers on a screen, no matter how those numbers were generated, that is essentially what the, these currencies are and what it ends up for us, it becomes and the money that we actually used to buy our survival with. So we live in a world where a very small percentage of people have really good lives. I mean like really good lives. They can have whatever they want. Um, they have servants looking after every need and every desire. They go wherever they like, for as long as they like, things like that. Very small percentage of people who live in that bracket. And then you get the wealthy, who are people who have a lot of money and can do a lot of things that they want to do, but some of the bigger things they might need to save up for, like buying an island. Maybe that's a little bit out of their reach, but everything else, you know, they can pretty much live the life they choose. Then we have the middle class, people who are getting by, have a relatively comfortable life. Um, they have to get loans from the, you know, most of the major investments or, or things that they want to do in their lives, like uh, maybe going on holiday, stuff like that. And then you have the people who are just scraping by, they're making enough money to survive, they have food, they, the kids can go to school, um, but that's it. There's no extra um, 
they are living on the breadline. And then you have people who are below that, who get, well, not enough. They have compromised uh, health care because they can't afford it. They can't afford to eat healthily. They probably can't afford to eat enough to not be hungry all the time. Now, when you like, when you think about the fact that the money that we're using to buy our survival and our comfortable lives with is just made up numbers on a computer screen, why the hell can everyone not just have enough to be healthy and comfortable and to have what they need? They, if, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling. The reality is that the only thing that's stopping that from happening is how we manage that money. Meaning not on personal level, but on a societal level, on global level. How we participate in the money system, um, the value that we put in money, and the beliefs that we hold around money. That only people who earn money, who work hard and get a job, they're the people who should, who, who deserve to have money and everyone else, well, sorry for them, but they need to try a little bit harder. Or, yes, the system is really awful and people shouldn't be living in poverty, but, you know, it's just the way things are. There's nothing I can do about it. So, well, you know, hopefully someone will change that for those people one day in the future. But it's not me. I'm just going to carry on with my life. Or, yeah, here's, here's a popular one. I'm going to make sure that my family is taken care of, that I'm taken care of, that I have what I need, my family has what they need, that we can be happy and fuck everyone else. Not in those words exactly, not like, oh, fuck you and fuck you and fuck you. It's more like, oh, sorry, oh, better luck next time. Oh, well, I wish I could help you. And when everyone is living with those kinds of mentalities where it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, where, where we don't give each other that which we would like, meaning comfortable lives, where it's something that we accept and, and are okay with only a few people having, then that is how things are going to be. We are the ones who have to change how we see things. We are the ones who have to change how we talk about things. We are the ones who have to change where we are able to, how we practically function within our society. And I'm not saying that we should give all of our money away and go live on the street with beggars. That's not going to solve anything. What will be a part of creating change is those moments in our daily lives where we can be part of making a change even if it's something as small apparently as um, sharing our our views on how things could be different and sharing our views on what principles we stand by and actually standing by those principles um, not allowing ourselves to be corrupted by a, a corrupt and broken system to hold fast to our values, to our principles, to live with dignity in all areas of our lives. And as simple as that sounds, that is how each and every one of us can practically and tangibly make a difference in this world. And, um, well, Maybe one day all of these currencies can actually be put to a good use. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please send a direct message or leave a comment. If you have any topics you'd like me to discuss, things like that. And uh, yeah, otherwise, you can support me on Patreon. I hope you enjoy the video and I shall see you next time.